Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Northampton Urban Forestry Commission meeting, June 5th, 2024. Um, the meeting is now being recorded. Um, and uh, public comment. Kent, I, uh, well, I wasn't sure if um, you wanted to comment on any of the um, emails that you recently sent to us about any of the updates you might have done to your um, website. Is, is your website up and running again? You're, you're muted, Kent. Sorry. It was, and now it seems to be broken again. I do still have the alternate. Um, I don't actually remember offhand what those were, but I have to look at the email to remind myself. Okay. Um, so, yeah. no, I don't think so. Okay. Um, we have time at the end of the meeting if you want to talk about any of those things, because uh, there's a slot at the end where we have uh, business not anticipated by the chair. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Did everyone have a chance to review the minutes? So if you did not, I please... need to. I need to look at them. Take your yes. take your yeah. take your time. Yep. Please just. I'll get that done. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Rich. Yes, sir. I, I send you a quick email to this effect, but shouldn't the meetings be from the May 15th? The ones I'm, I'm reading are from May 1st. Oh, that's a good question. I did not, uh, to, hmm, that's a good, I didn't catch that. I wonder if I sent you the wrong ones. Well, it's always a possibility. Bonnie, did we make a, did I make a mistake, you think? I probably did. Hold on one second. Um, let me just go find... Um, here. Let's go back one. Back no, they're the May 15th minutes. Did I send the wrong? I wonder if I sent the wrong ones in the email. I bet you I did. I bet you that's my problem. Wouldn't surprise me. Or could the date just be wrong? Um, uh, let's see, UFC. Nope, I sent the wrong ones. Hold on one second. My mistake, let me send you the correct ones. My fault. I did this very early in the morning, and I most likely did not have my glasses on. <laughs> Just not the first time. All right. Um, let, me, oh, let me compose an email. Excuse me. All too relatable. Oh man, I'll tell you. Sue, Sue Lothos of Verizon, Rich Parish, David Lukens. No. I can do it pretty easily, Rich, if you want me to. Yeah, I, I'm almost there. Uh, Interesting. You know what, Bonnie? I think you're going to have to because I for think some I just did. Okay. In that I same have... email, so you should all get them. Okay, because uh, I'm. It keeps wanting to make a zip file for some reason. Okay. Well, you should all. Let's see. We should all have them in our inbox. Sorry about that. You sent them to me, or sent them to the whole commission? Uh, the whole commission. Okay. But I used your email just so I had everyone's email address quickly. Okay. 
Hmm. No. Oh, he already came. It just came yeah. for me anyway. Okay. So if you can, we can all actually, I'll review them as well because. I'm done. I, I finished for what it's worth reading. Okay. Thanks for sending. Yeah. Yep. Sorry about that. I'm finished. I have a couple of changes or corrections. I'm just waiting for Jordan to tell us that uh, he's reviewed them. I did. I reviewed them. Sorry, I've been messing with my camera as well. So I'm all set. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, just a couple of... Uh, um, whoops, hold on a second. Let me go back where I was. Okay, a couple of ch changes. So uh, under the public comment, uh, and the second sentence of the first bulleted point, so there is a rumor that they're being cut down. We should probably specify there is a rumor that they are cutting down the trees on the lot or something of that nature. Just so it quantifies what they're being, what they're cutting down. Uh, under chair tree warden report, uh -huh. um, says the mayor and the city councilors uh, toured all of the should say instead of parts should say divisions of the Department of Public Works. Yep. Um, the uh, significant tree you know, bulleted on the the top bullet on the second page. Significant tree ordinance will be revisited. In the late summer or early fall. Okay. Uh, 
Rich will meet with Carolyn to review. It should say Rich will meet with Carolyn to review the draft ordinance prior to it going through the public hearing process. Okay. And then I didn't really see anything else. If anyone else has anything, please feel free to um, have uh, ask Bonnie to make some corrections. Now I've got to find my screen. There it is. Okay. Anyone else have any suggestions or recommendations? Okay. Uh, could we get a motion to accept the minutes as amended, please? I move to accept the, mission, the, the minutes as amended. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second it. All right, David, second. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, Bonnie, could would you please have a roll call vote? Absolutely. Richard Parasoletti? Uh Yes. Susan? You're muted. <laughs> Sorry, abstain. I was not present. Jennifer? Yes. David? Yes. And Jordan? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Okay, so let's uh, go to the uh, chair of tree warden report. So the last meeting was prior to the public shade tree hearing on Turkey Hill Road. Public shade tree hearing was completed. Um, there were no objections. Um, the mitigation, uh, National Grid agreed to the mitigation, the mitigation including the fee, the, uh, fee for the legal ad is um, 11000 dollars and change so that will be going into our uh, um, our tree warden fund for tree planting um, while national grid also I may have mentioned this before they agreed to do a bunch of other tree work on turkey hill road so they took down i would say probably about 10 trees on turkey hill road are that are not part of this hearing project that were either uh dead or or, or dying that have been marked for quite some time. So they did all the removals and then they left the wood behind for us to pick up. So that's what the crew worked on today. And I'm sure they'll work on that tomorrow um, and bring that to the wood waste facility. And then um, they will come back when they're ready to actually install the new utility poles and they will do these removals uh, for the, where the public shade hearing was held at the top of uh, Turkey Hill. Um. <clears throat> Today, there was a, uh, a, and I sent you a very late link, and I apologize, but uh, today there was a PDS that was put on by Mass Tree Wardens and Forester Association about uh, non-governmental organizations, uh, specifically tree non-governmental organizations. And Jen uh, was our, Jen was, got to be a star today. So thank you, Jen. Um, but the, uh, Jen and I can somehow, if you didn't, we're able to attend, Jen and I, and Jordan probably could all share the video with you so you could see it. Um, but just don't tell Heather at Mastery Wardens that we're allowing that to happen. Um, but we ended up, uh, Jen and I were a fill in. We were, there was another community, Fall River, that uh, um, was not able to participate. So um, the PDS, and some of you may have, do you remember AJ Elton? Do any of you remember AJ? Uh, AJ was a, uh, a, a student, uh, an urban forestry student at UMass. Um, for, uh, worked with uh, Rich, uh, uh, Doctor uh, Rich Harper, Rick Harper. So his uh, master's thesis was on and and non-governmental organizations, specifically urban forestry non-governmental organizations, sort of like Tree Northampton or uh, the Worcester Tree Initiative or Trees for Watertown or um, I think the Greenfield Tree Committee. And so he basically did a study on the East Coast of all of the um, 
tree, uh, urban tree, non non governmental organizations that were actually partnering with other like tree commissions, tree committees, or municipalities to do tree planting. And so there was, uh, he gave a presentation about a half an hour, which again, we can, we'll share the video with you. And then um, Trees for Watertown was talking there, um, gr the Greenfield Tree Committee, which is a, um, a, a another NGO in Greenfield, who's, they've had a lot of success with their community. And then um, Jen uh, came in uh, to sort of take up the last position and we talked about our tree program, uh, our initiative here. So I think it was well received. It's kind of hard to do a PDS like that this time of year, especially for uh, folks in this industry, because as you can see, today's a beautiful sunny day. Most people are outside now, you know, doing things. They're not, if it was raining, we probably would have more attendance. I think there were probably 25 people there, including the, including the uh, speakers. So um, but it was something new. We haven't, we normally don't do an, uh, a, like a webinar type PDS. We've always done them in, in person. So it's sort of an experiment for mastery wardens, but I think it was successful and I think it was great to hear the other communities. So thank you, Jen. Uh, I, I appreciate it very much uh, for filling in at the very end. Uh, I enjoyed doing it. You know, we, we've, we've had a lot of success, you know, um, and we figured a lot of things out that I I would love to have more chances to talk to people about what we figured, you know, because then people don't have to reinvent the wheel. But it was particularly interesting because, um, you know, the different tree and different governmental organization, non-government organizations um, really did different things. You know, I had no idea Greenfield has this tree nursery that volunteers are doing i mean that was so interesting so here here um i appreciated what you guys how you guys represented the work being done here um i thought it was a great show especially filling into the last minute um i thought aj's research um was interesting and some of the um responses that he had for instance one that stuck with me was that 80 percent of the tree uh, affiliated NGOs in this state do not use social media to share their work. So, you know, 20% do. So I thought that kind of was an interesting number, but his data is, I think, helpful and uh, echoing what you said, um, Jen, about um, Greenfield and their nursery. Um, you know, so close to home, uh, I had no idea either. So um, I think this format is particularly helpful. And and this time of year, right, as you said, you know, we're, we're trying to be outside, get our work done. But I mean, I happen to be working from home because my partner is recovering from surgery. But, you know, to sneak that in at, at you know, 12 o'clock during a lunch break or whatever is really an effective way, I think, to to share information um, regarding what we're all doing. So I thought it was great. Um, one of the things that I'm. Uh going to be encouraging um, in January, if uh, if the body of Mass Tree Warden so chooses, I'll be the president. And one of the things that is going to, I'm interested in doing it is trying to, because basically we have, we have individual, we have a lot of individual members, people like myself that are tree wardens, people that are, uh, you know, in the industry. Um, we don't have a lot of NGOs. We don't have a lot of tree committees. Um, so I'm really interested in, in utilizing somehow by trying to, to tie people together that are not uh, traditional tree wardens and foresters. Um, so I, I, it's going to be something that I'm going to work on, so stay tuned. But I think that would be one way um, to actually bring more people together that actually do this work in other municipalities across the Commonwealth. Because um, there are a lot of people out there that I've met, it, even the, just this spring, in my own personal travels, that are like, you know, how did you do this? How, where, how, where did you, you know, did that work? Did it fail? It's just everywhere. And so I think we're, even though like we're so connected by social media, we're, we're not really connected. I mean, you know, I I think it would be uh, beneficial to, to bring non-traditional um, volunteer groups that actually really tie this whole sustainable urban and community forestry initiative that a lot of us are trying to put together and keep running so well, I've heard 
me real quick is uh wouldn't it be great if the tree steward training spent half of a day on you know ngos and uh related to trees or you know would just presentations or panels or you know i just think yeah there's just so much to learn you know between there, and it'd be a good way to market that to people who probably wouldn't go you know yes that's how i ended up actually meeting um pat and um and marcus i had met marcus before marcus is the tree warden in west springfield pat is the chair of their tree committee that's how I met Pat was at a tree steward training. And so I, during the day I went down there in my role as the city's tree warden to, uh, to meet Marcus and actually meet their commission and give them a presentation. Um, but I will mention that to um, uh, Julie Coop, um, who is uh, the primary person that works on the agenda for the tree steward training. And they, they, they split the tree steward training in half. It happens, uh, uh, one day is in Western Mass, and the next day is in the eastern part of the state. So, um, but I think that's a really great. It's really that's really interesting. So I will mention that to her. We'll see what happens. So, I mean, uh, even just like nuts and bolts, I think about like just something simple, like oh, we dig and put our soil on tarps. You know, like yeah. just as a person who's done a lot of this work, it's like. Oh, yeah, like that was a brilliant idea because it's way easier to clean up and manage the materials you want to get rid of it. You know, I mean, that kind of stuff. I'm like, whoa, that's a great idea, you know. And it goes a long way to with public relations. You know, you leave every, you look neat, you leave it neat. I see a presentation in your your futures, the two of you. <laughs> Really, I mean, you guys have gleaned so much, you know, capture it, you have photos, just folks can really learn from the successful program here. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that I'm interested in doing, and I'm stealing a little bit of thunder from the former um, city arborist of uh, Ithaca, New York, Andy Hillman, but I, we're at the point now where we can actually go back and take photographs, and I'm going to do that, I'm going to spend the summer taking photographs of um, all the uh, different tree species that we've planted that are you know now you know eight seven eight you know six years old um and sort of sort of, sort of record them and talk about them and actually put a presentation together um because one of the things that i find people are struggling with still and i understand it um and of course I'm, this is not on the agenda but the the native versus the native versus non-native conversation about planting native trees in the public right away versus planting and i'm not going to say non-native but non-traditional new england trees um and i think it's important to to tell people the success stories of those non-traditional street trees um that we've planted um I and mean, i was just uh where was i um oh i was on middle street i was looking at a, another tree on middle street yesterday and um some of the trees we planted there is that setback in 2019 are huge they're, they're they're glorious it's 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 unbelievable so it's just it's just impressive and i you know i go ahead sue sorry oh no when you're done yeah ah. i want i want no, to tag I, I, on that exact sentiment on my street a neighbor had put a little oak tree white oak tree in the tree bell like and when we were we came along to plant and we were planting white oaks along there and it was like three feet high and Rob didn't want to take it out. It's just as big as the other, the trees we put in the one inch caliper or whatever. And we're having a lot of pushback on the trees are so small. I love that rich that you want to document how beautifully they grow. They're well planted, especially a setback people. I had, I've had three people recently complaining about this. So small. Sorry. I was... No, no, it's, it, it's That's... all good. You know, one of the things that, and uh, Jordan, your hands up, but I'll just finish up with this real quick. And one of the things that I tell people when I'm um, trying, I'm showing teaching or talking about planting and is that, you know, people want large trees. They want big caliper B and B trees. And I'm like, well, that's wonderful. I said, but 
let's take the root ball apart. Where's all the fibrous roots? There aren't any. They're all in the nursery. All you have is severed structural roots with maybe 10 fibrous roots about this long off of that one stem. And it's going to take a minimum of three to four years for that tree to recover the injury if it even makes it. So planting smaller trees that have more fibrous roots have, have proven to be um, more su successful. Um, the only exception to that rule would be like bare root stock that comes that has a lot of fibrous roots just be, but it, you know, it only comes at a certain times of the year. So, but anyways, Jordan, sorry. No, I, that's point well taken and, and agreed. Um, we just did a large planting for in conjunction with American forests, which could be potentially another funding resource, um, you know, for Northampton. Um, and, um, you know, we went with an uh, inch and inch and three quarters to two inch instead of our usual two, two and a half, you know, it saves us money on the front end, but you get, a uh, tree that's more adaptable because it has less infrastructure to support, it's younger. Um, but backing up just to a couple of the earlier comments about native trees, I think sort of in the society at large, folks have a sense of you know, native, equating native is good. We like that concept. Um, but interestingly, what was um, mentioned today, it might've been in Greenfield, the notion of cultivars of native plants, because you know, through the years, been a lot of pushback on that. I mean, my sense is already has always been, you know, you might be putting a cultivar out there, you're planting a native cultivar, it will, you know, cross pollinate with non cultivar material out there, and just getting the species out there in the wild to enhance habitat, um, build the ecosystem, etc. So I'm a fan of, um, of cultivars, frankly, they're what's available in the trade, if we're talking on honing in on, on natives. So I've, I've always taken that stand. And I think that can benefit us. Uh, furthermore, uh, two of the folks mentioned sort of trees that are virtually impossible to get in the trade. Uh, the Maclora, the um, Osage Orange, not a tree you're going to plant out in the street, but a fantastic urban tree, nevertheless, for parks. Uh, there might be some uh, fruitless cultivars um, out there in the trade. And uh, I'm a fan, as well as the um, Turkish filbert, a desirable for a street tree as well, hard to get. Um, you know, I recently saw a, a list of street trees um, and, you know, 20 percent of them were things like Turkish filbert or, you know, carry a, the um, hickories, which you just simply cannot find in the nursery trade. Um, so I was interested to see those as par part of the conversation. And yeah. Well, and I, I just I just want to remind you that we did um I wrote up a I don't know one and a half page thing when we kept getting so much uh so many people of the public saying why aren't you only planting natives why so I kind of uh wrote up this page yeah. and a half I think it's on the that talks a lot about uh you know for canopy percentages and uh, you know, our common natives' ability to adapt to climate change, and you know, all kind, all kinds of pest stuff, like all of these things that go into, you know, how we decide. And please feel free to, you know, use that if you want to, you know, if you want to use it. And uh, oh, one other quick thing, and I'll be quiet. Um, one group of trees that we've planted that blew me away are Amermachias. Like I never. I never planted those and we planted them bare roots up on Bridge Street across from the post office. And those things are beautiful. I mean, they're unbelievable. You know, they're just, I can't remember how many years ago we planted that area, but boy, they, that would be a tree, you know, and that's a tough spot. That is a tough spot. Salt, heat, you know, it's uh, heavy pollution, you know. So that, anyway, that, that, that was quick points and I'll, I'll wrap it up. I just wanted to say um, yes to that. That tree is um, on the Hartford, Connecticut's tree list. Um, additionally, the, the point about natives, you know, I believe that seed pollinators should form the backbone and they will because things like oaks, are, you know, they're grown from seed. But to exclude the cultivars, um, it, it, we're sort of lo losing out an opportunity. And I was happy to see that they are being included in some of our NGOs uh, today. And um, there's one more thing. You can see I'm passionate about this topic. So yeah, fun. <laughs>
I, I, uh, um, to Jen's point, um, Brooke, who, who works with me in the DPW and does all the tree watering. And she said to me, she said, did you know that Northampton, uh, and she said on some online, some magazine, she said, Northampton is rated as one of the top 10 places to live in this particular magazine. And the picture that they showed was the picture of the front of historic Northampton. Um, and Brooke said, all you could see, you couldn't see the buildings. All you saw were the trees we planted in the front. So, so uh, she's going to find the article and send it to me. Once I have it, I'll share it with you. But again, you know, that was, uh, that's, that was 2018 that we did that because that was the last year that I was the highway superintendent. So um, I was able to divide up the parking spaces and I made parking appear out of nowhere. And next thing you know, we had trees and, you know, so anyways, we're way off topic, but yes, I, I think it's all good. And again, um, I'd love to circle back um, and talk more about this. Cause I, I, and I am going to document, uh, I'm going to document things that we have planted that have been successful and things that have not been successful. I'm also going to uh, do a uh, tree inventory at Bridge Street Cemetery this summer to update the inventory that we already have. And I'm hopefully going to try to apply for uh, um, a class one arboretum status for the cemetery, because I think we have enough plant material, diverse plant material there now that we can do so. So um, I got that. I um, I got that thought in my head from Chris Rosa, who some of you may remember came to one of our commission meetings as the, he's the tree warden in Malden. So he did the same thing. Class one, um, sem, uh, class one arboretum at Forestdale Cemetery in Malden. So, um, so anyways, I'll keep you posted on that. Just some projects in the back of my mind. Uh, I don't know. I'll, I don't know when I'll find the time, but I'll find the time. I have a question for all of you. Thanks for the, this great feedback. What, was the native non-native conversation? Did that surface at today's meeting, or is that is that something you're hearing from citizens who want more native species, or both? Um, I mean, Jen, I don't, I don't think that in Jordan, I don't think that came up specifically today. I don't really think we talked about. No, it didn't really come up today, and I haven't. Um, I haven't really had a conversation with someone about native versus non-native or, or or native cultivars recently, but I mean, it's still, if you remember, there was a, a large push and it's still happening about, um, I can't remember the name of the group. Amy Meltzer was uh, part of that group uh, who was, they were trying to get a bill passed through the state house to create a uh, tree nurseries throughout the Commonwealth that were only, uh, propagating native tree stock um, to, you know, hope to um, create um, more uh, pollinator habitat or natural pollinator habitat. But no, it hasn't been really much pushback recently, unless, I don't know, Jen, have you experienced any pushback when you've been citing trees um, and things? Um, I would say today, I think the topic came up because uh, the Greenfield folks have a nursery and they said that they they try to grow a certain percentage of native trees. Um, in the, you know, sometimes when I'm out sighting, I've had people stop me and say, you're gonna plant all native trees, aren't you? And I say, we try to plant as many native trees as we can, and these are the reasons why. And then only in, for there's a little chunk of time where we had a lot of people coming um, to, um, uh, to the tree commission meetings and were kept asking that, how do we choose trees? How do we, you know, so that's why I wrote up that sheet. And, you know, a lot of people are really a kind of um, citizen scientists who've read like Doug Tallamy's book or something, like only want us to plant oaks, which oaks are great, but you can't really, you know, oaks, you, they're not, if you plant oaks around a school, then you have, you know, if somebody has a disability or something, you can't have like acorns all over the sidewalk, you know, if you can help it, you know, like, so there's a lot of, you know, there's, there's a lot that goes into it, you know, and I, I feel like we try our best to, to get native plants and we definitely are, I call them climate change trees, but we're, you know, Emerald City, to our tulip trees and the sweet gums and, we're trying to 
you know, use those, they're appropriate for a hardiness zone, but they don't like, you won't find them in the forest here. But um, so we, I feel like we, you know, we do try to, you know, have as many, we have some understory natives that are pretty popular. People are really asking for red buds, but they're not salt tolerant, you know? So, you know, there, there's always, you know, if you've got a really, 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 really tough site, like I think about um, across from the roost, we planted um, a honey locust. You know, a lot of people are like, ah, honey locust. But let me tell you what, those things are like booming, you know, and there's not a lot of trees that would do very well in that particular spot, I don't think, you know. So I hope that answered your question. <laughs> Yeah, Jen, you know, and uh, David, as part of this conversation, you know, because there's that whole thing about a little bit of knowledge, right? You know, folks have good intentions, and I think the Native conversation, you know, is ongoing. Um, but as part of that, you know, the resilience question is what we're faced with now, and especially in light of, you know, what's happening on the climate front. Um, so if we can perhaps as part of our the way that we communicate about natives and non-natives, we can introduce the, you know, the, the 10, 20, 30 rule as, as part of a response and educate people on that, because that I think will make people feel confident the choices that they make and, uh, you know, folks like ourselves um, can make. So, because that that is a lot of the funders and a lot of the grants and just a lot of the science points to the fact that if, you know, we do our best to abide by the 10, 20, 30, um, it's it's going to help us is in in the similar way that focusing on natives, not to the exclusion of introduced species, but focusing on natives will. Thank you. This is this is a really great conversation. I know it's not necessarily not on our agenda, and, but we have time. But it's great. I I I appreciate it, and I think it's uh, it's nice to talk about these things. And sometimes it's great to look back and look at what you've done over a period of time and. Then actually co-mingle or network with other people that are doing the same thing and, and see what they do well, what they've done well, and what they feel they haven't done well enough. Or I just think it's very interesting. Um, because we're really all we're really all trying to do the same thing. We just go about it in different ways, you know. We, you know, we have different uh interpretations of scientific data or different interpretations of things and you know, it's just like two arborists, you put them next to each other and they may look at the tree and have two varying opinions about the condition of the tree, right? So Jordan, I think you and I can relate to that. Uh, but so anyways, um, one other thing before I move on, uh, our Tree City, the Tree City USA award ceremony is June 18th. It's in Westboro. Um, I am not sure if I'm going to go or not because the day prior to that I have a a, a tree uh, risk qualification training recertification and then the following day after that is a holiday and then after that I'm going to be gone to Martha's Vineyard for um the rest of the time so um I may decline the invitation um unless someone wants to go from the commission to accept a, accept the <clears throat> the award which is just basically a box that has like our stickers in it, et cetera. But if someone's interested in going, let me know. Um, and let me see, I, excuse me. Um, I believe that is all for my report. Oh, one, yes, one other thing, I'm sorry. Um, at our last meeting, public comment, um, Sage came and spoke about the uh, the trees that are behind the, the old uh, Hess Station or Speedway. So I, I did uh, follow up uh, with Sage and, and uh, said that those trees are private. They belong to National Grid. Uh, and so as the tree warden uh, and the commission, we have no jurisdiction over what happens to those trees, the trees on private property. Since then, National Grid came in and they cleared the lot. So it's completely devoid of trees. I, I went and looked at it yesterday. I took a walk down the bike path. <clears throat> so unfortunately, it was a little... Uh, a wooded area um, that had um, a uh, houseless uh, encampment and um, they, the, the uh, encampment got removed 
sorry, excuse me, and the national grid decided to uh, take all the trees down. So we lost a little piece of greenery in the the urban heat island that we now have. But just wanted to let you know that I did follow up. Um, all right. Any questions, Jen? I have a quick question about um, if you can't answer it now, that's fine. Sure. Um, you know, um, like the building, the the um, businesses on King Street. I know when they put them in, like the planning board says, okay, you have to have X amount of trees or whatever. Um, and then we know that then, you know, they're being pruned like, you know, back to nothing. And I'm pretty sure they're not public trees, but is there some, I mean, does the planning board have agency or the plan, uh, uh, sustain, whatever, planning and sustainability uh, commission or who, whoever, the planning department or whatever you call it, um, mm -hmm. recourse? Because, okay, they tell them they have to plant those trees, like according to their agreement or uh, there's some occupation agreement or something. I don't know. Uh, the, yeah, yeah, no, there, there's a site, there's a, some of those properties have a site plan approval. Right. Um, so they, they have a, they have a uh, order of condition that follows that property forever. So if, you owned it and I bought it from you, I'd have to follow the same order unless I was changing the use of the property. Then I would have to go back in front of planning and basically start all over again. Um, so to answer your question in short, no, there is no recourse other than if the trees die, the landowner or the property owner is responsible for replacing them. The planning board does not set stipulations as to how you're to care for the trees or what kind of pruning prescription you're going to have for the tree but they do they do require them to have a set amount of trees in the parking lot or abutting the you know next to the building or whatever it may be based on what the planning board at the time approved so um if you're talking about the the lee a lot yeah um, where they've gone back and and um pilarded so that's on video pilarded right so um <laughs> There, I mean, it's something I just wouldn't do. I actually would encourage the owner of the property not to do that because what you're doing is you're creating a bush. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you if you want people to see the vehicles and see the front of the building, what do you do? You let the canopy grow, and then you you know decide what is going to be your first permanent branch, and it's hopefully 25 feet off the ground, but it just takes time. People think that by pollarding things that, you know, they're forcing the tree into this thick shrub looking type thing. But I think one of those trees has died. But no, the answer to your yeah. question is no, there is no recourse unless the tree dies, then it has to be replaced. I, they we, killed at least one. Yes, yeah. I, I, I I saw that, Sue. So, so I need to reach kind out. Of the, kind of the purpose of those uh, agreements are that they have to put trees in to provide services. Like it's not just like willy nil. There's a reason, you know. Yes. So yes. Yep. I I I I, I, I agree, and I think the the question is is that does the planning board have the ability to dictate to that finite amount of time? Like if it if you if they're t if we are telling the if the planning board is telling the applicant that is a part of your condition that we're going to approve this project, that you are going to plant a tree that's going to get 40 feet tall and you must make sure it gets to 40 feet tall. I don't know if that kind of um, language could be put in a planning document. I don't know if it would be considered overreach. That would be like a, an attorney Seawald question, which I'm happy to ask. But yeah, I I'd, I'd be interested to know where if there's a way yep. as a person I could advocate advocate or as a commission because it's really what well, it looks bad but also it's uh it's not meeting the goals you know that's a, a heat island area there's probably you know they're not meeting the goals of why that recommendation or agreement right. was in there to begin with so thank okay. you i, I yeah. appreciate it. yep you're welcome i'll follow up and i'll get back to you i, I will contact carolyn about the dead tree and we'll we'll uh the building inspector would that's where the building inspector would come in and actually write the 
uh, property owner a letter because the building inspector is the enforcement wing for the zoning. So any other questions? Okay. Uh, all right. Setback planning initiative. Uh, we're way over time. It's 517, but we have time. Uh, I have, um, does anyone have anything to report or do they want to continue the conversation about setbacks? I left it on there because I think we were sort of trying to figure out, um, where we were going to, um, based on, I think we were going to look we were going to identify uh, uh, certain parts or a pilot area for um, a setback planting, a larger setback planting, or we are going to identify certain wards or certain streets and certain wards based on um, data that Ken had uh, that he distilled for us and put together, and also um, data that Molly, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, that Molly had for locations of setbacks. And I have not had a conversation with Kent or Molly about this. Of course, Molly has been gone. So I don't know if you just want to table this. Yes, is Kent, Kent still here? He yeah. Is. Um, so that is actually what my updates were about um, on the maps. And they're not that big, but the um, town center map that shows Molly's survey data. And by the way, I, I would just want to say a lot of people contributed to that. I guess Molly spearheaded it, but if you look at the names, uh, I know Sue is in there, and I think Jen and Rich and someone named Chris, I don't know. So I just cringe a little bit when people call it Molly's data because a lot of people worked on that. But um, I guess she spearheaded it. Anyway, I put in the environmental justice areas on that map. Um, David and I actually did a little bit of walking around the uh, Jackson Street area this morning looking at possible sites. Um, and the other thing I did was I, I made it a little bit easier to select. So if there's a particular street within that town center data that you want to look at, you can actually select a particular street and see that I, that's what I did. Um, Sue and, and Paul and I walked State Street and looked at my, some of my sites and some of Molly's sites. Uh, excuse me, second, I got cramp. Um, so those are those are the changes I made, and I, I think maybe the idea was to look at the environmental justice areas. Um, one David and I were looking at is actually huge. It goes from um, uh, let's see the southern part. It goes uh, from the bike possible path. to share. Pardon? Is it something you could share screen? Yeah, sure. Is that okay, Rich? Hold Absolutely. Hold on, Kent. Let me just uh, make you co-host. Yes, you're all set, Kent. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, let's see. Why don't I bring up that that particular map that I was just talking about? Um, while you're doing that, Kent, D David, did you did you walk along Jackson Street by uh, Hampshire Heights and then take a right and go down, um, or go down to where they're doing the construction on Damon Road? No. Oh, okay. No, we, uh, Ken and I walked sort of the perimeter along Prospect Avenue. Okay. To the new affordable housing that's going to be across the street and then right. wended our way back. Okay. The reason I'm asking is because they removed a bunch of trees in conjunction with that road widening mm -hmm. project um, at the back end of Hampshire Heights as you exit out onto um bridge road and then also right next to the goodwill mm -hmm. there was like a, there's a nice red maple there that i actually went to go take pictures of it to, because the root systems was completely were completely exposed and i i should have did it that day the next day i went by the tree was gone <laughs> so um so there's not a lot of shade there but thank okay anyways thank you kent and so this is um these dots are the town center sites that were surveyed the green dots and if you Click on one, or maybe you have to turn off some of these other things. The overlays are, it will give you a little bit of information about it. So, this is um, 26 State Street, possibly 10, 10 or more trees there. Mm. Um, you can search up here if you want to see just tree belt trees, for example. You can click on 
tree belt and it will show you uh, I guess there weren't very many trees that were surveyed within the tree belt. We but filled the, up a lot of the tree belt. Yeah, to the point of uh, the environmental justice. So this one, well, all of downtown Northampton. I mean, if you look at this, is the quarter mile city center that is the area that was surveyed. Um, and all of this other gray is the uh, environmental justice areas. And then this one up here is also quite large. It goes from the bike path on the south to Jackson Street on the west, all the way up to the river. Um, so it includes you know, North King Street and-, and Are these, like, do these correspond with census blocks in any that's way? That's exactly what they are. It's based on, okay. so the, um, yeah, we were looking at this up. There's three criteria that can be, that can qualify a census block as an environmental justice region <laughs> um, or community, I guess they call them. One is percent minority, which I think is um, 25 to 35 percent minority. The uh, percent of households that are, I, I don't have exactly, but there's an income thing that compares the median household income within the census block to the uh, statewide median household income. And then there's a component of language, how many um, non-English speakers are there. Um, and actually, if you, MassGIS has a nice map that calls out exactly what the specific criteria are. Um, David, I don't know if you remember, we looked at this, I think it was 33% minority and it was qualifying on both the income and the minority, but it is a large area. Um, unfortunately, the income and uh, language um, items are only available from the American Community Survey, which means they're only available at the census block level. The um, minority population, I think, is available at the, at the, I'm sorry, they're at block group level, which is pretty large. This is one census block group. This is a block group. This downtown Northampton has several because it's more populous. Um, but the minority information is available at the block level. So I thought it, this might be more useful as a tool for focusing our attention if we, if I got that data and tried to see, you know, where exactly within this region are the minority areas. And I don't know, maybe you all know, but probably industrial drive is not a high minority population, I'm guessing, um, because it's not residential. So anyway, um, those are my thoughts. Would, um, would it be uh, just a thought, would it be worth, now that we have this, I know that we have the quarter, quarter mile of data or the sites for the quarter mile of data, but would it be helpful to take this particular block and actually build data for this particular EJ block if we chose to plant in uh chose to plant in this location or want to, you know I mean I, I definitely know that uh Hampshire Heights and the front the front of Hampshire Heights their trees are they're really non-existent except for the few street trees that we've put in there um, but that's just my ob observation from going and looking at. Um, What's the next step for getting into their property? There's a lot of space for good for trees. I mean, I think, you know, we have a relation. We we Rob and I had a relationship with Kara Leeper. Kara was the executive director of the housing authority. Um, so that would be where I would start. I would have a conversation with Kara. Um and that's how we ended up planting all those trees at the Cahill Apartments on Fruit Street. Yeah. But that's just one. I mean, th that's just one location. There's, there's probably, there's probably more. There's probably, there's obviously more locations to plant. It's just a matter of finding the locations um, and uh, determining whether you know their tree belt, whether they're setback right away or you know on city property like a school or inside of a park or something would she need a letter or would she need just i think what I, I think i think i would i would just call her 
I'd call her on the phone and just reintroduce myself to her and just talk to her and see if she would be amenable. And if she that would and, be awesome. Yeah, I mean it's it's going to be probably a board decision because there is a board that manages yeah. the housing authority, but it's just uh, that would be one way to do it. Um. So I, you know, I I'm not. Uh, Again, it's, you know, we, we have identified, uh, Ken, if you could zoom back out just for a second so we could see downtown. So, you know, we've identified uh, planting. Uh, how many of those, Kent, are setbacks just for? Um... Um, quite a few. Okay. So, um... you know, here's, here's an example of where we have data already. Um, we have an established uh, potential setback plantings. The question is, do we, do we, do we pick this like as a pilot, like a pilot, and go around with our door hangers in the setback brochure and actually try to create some traction, you know, and, and something we've already started, you know. Do, and, sorry, go ahead. No, no, it's all. So I'm just, just. I'm just throwing out random thoughts. That's all. So each of those of those green dots has an address affiliated with it. Yes. So I I mean I think. I mean, just as the person who's on the other end, you know, you know, like, uh, you know, trying to get when out there getting the trees in the holes, I think that this area kind of is a a double um you know double emphasis so to speak like it's um you know it's a ejc neighborhood right is that what the label is environmental justice community yeah, yeah. plus it's within you know it's close to the downtown center right. so if we i would i personally would prefer um to do a pilot in a chunk of an area like this because the other thing is when we go to plant let's say we get 20 sites they're kind of close together you know they're in the same region so it's easier to deliver trees it's easier to have um uh kind of quality control over the planting because um, you know it's not on you know across you know, you know, five, you know, 20 blocks away where I have to swing by there and, you know, kind of double check sometimes. Um, I mean, I think it's a, it's a finite amount. We can just see, I mean, I think that's, you know, I think that's a good idea. We have to have probably more than Christina to be willing to go talk to people when they respond. Because it takes a lot of back and forth. Um, we probably should have a small team of people who are willing to go talk to the residents when they uh, respond. And maybe we could have a meeting be ahead of time and have a strategy or a list of trees or whatever. You know what I mean? We should go out with everybody being on the same page. and. Um, to get the work done, I, you know, my concern is about response, you know, to getting response. And probably this summer would actually be a decent time to do it because it would give us time to put a stake in the ground, get them to commit to a tree, get the paperwork and start a nursery list. Is, uh, I mean, those are just my thoughts, but I think, I think we should try to move forward. You know, if this is a priority of ours, let's try it. And this seems like a logical place. I um, agree. Sounds great. I, I, just, I have a question for Ken. Ken, is it possible um, to uh, put the wards as a um, a top? You know, to put the wards on this map as well. Sure. Because that would be helpful when we need to figure out who we need to communicate with for the counselor for that particular ward. Because I think it's like ward ward four, two, three, and one might 
sort of all touch. I don't think maybe not one so much, but I know three, three and four for sure. And that way that we could sort of toggle it off and on. Yeah, it's it's really easy to add overlays like this environmental justice overlay when I okay. when I have the data and I do have more data. I should add a selector also up here for um which town center because down here it shows you how many trees. So there are 242 setback trees, but they're not all in um, Northampton City Center. You know, here's North Maple, so these are Florence. Yeah. Um, but you can you can actually print out, download the list when you when you get your selections the way you like them. I mean, I I um just also I'd like to I agree with Jen. I you know I think it would be it's it's uh your comp your good place for a pilot you're sort of covering the ej area you're also creating canopy in the urban heat island area and it's also close by for i mean for logistics right for us for deliveries it's been um it's been not uh, not difficult but it's takes longer to do deliveries because we're traveling all over the place now for one tree here, one tree here. It's, and I'm not complaining about it at all. I mean, it gets done, but it just, it's just, it's time and effort. That's all, but it's helpful to have. And I think it's also helpful, right, Sue, for volunteers, if you're sort of sending them like all in the same place or within a few blocks yeah, of each other. Jen, versus... Jen spends a lot of time yeah. looking every step of the way trying to get them as close together as possible because you yeah. do want people to be together yeah. to yeah. supervise for quality control as jen said you got to yeah. have somebody with each team who can do quality control yeah i'll, I'll just uh say i love the idea of doing a pilot here um based on my experience walking around with Kent for an hour, putting in uh, capturing point location data on a phone, sort of like a digital version of the the priority planning stuff that we did with Molly. It's just a vast area. I mean, it encompasses the stop and shop and it runs all the way across Industrial Drive to the Kinetic route. So there has to be some way of focusing in, even within this pilot area. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, what are the boundaries of this? What are the boundaries of this uh, one? Basically, like, what are the? I can't really read the names of the streets. Um, yeah, this so one, this, like, this roughly one, the city center. Yeah, yeah. Um. Well, the EJ region. This is Elm Street, um, Prospect, uh, Trumbull. Okay. Okay. Down okay. the bike path, up Bridge Street, down along the levee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, back, I don't know what street this is, Lyman Road, from, from the intersection with I-91, and then back through um, behind South Street, yep. along South Street to um, Earl. And this is mm -hmm. kind of weird you know, Route 66 and then cutting back mm -hmm. to, or rather Brute Burt's Pit Road and cutting back to 66. And I don't know where they got this. Is it, I mean, it's, it's kind of, you know, <laughs> census boundaries are just mm -hmm. for the convenience of the census. They don't mm -hmm. necessarily make sense um, for in terms of neighborhoods or the kind of things that we might actually like, but it, that's where that's where the data is. Anyway, this comes out to um oh, uh, this, is, this is the the uh prison here. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And just cutting across fields and out to the Mill River. Okay. And back but, up on uh Ken Kensington and Elm Street. Kensington. So but uh uh the data points we have that are close to the city the center are really only in that area, which right. isn't actually that huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So we, my point is I, I would favor not going further out at this point into the part we didn't get that is still within yeah. the boundaries, but not the, not that we stick to this uh, place right there. And we can have a count of how many, you know, how many sites there are and what percentage we get response and, you know, all kinds of stuff, you know? Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense because it's already surveyed. Right. It's priority region by virtue of being town center, it's priority region by virtue of environmental justice, priority region by virtue of being um, primary and secondary roads, and, you know, highly traveled roads, a lot of these. Um, you know, we've got New South Street and Main Street and Elm Street. Center Street, um, State Street, those are all, Con Street, those are all highly traveled roads. And that's another of the priority considerations. So I think it makes a lot of sense for a lot, because it checks a lot of boxes. Great maps, Kent. Thank you. Yes. I love it. Kent, Kent, is this the one that uh, you sent us um, in one of those most recent links? Yeah, it was um, May eighteenth. I could. Um, I mean, you, you don't have if you want to if you want to put the uh, ward layer on there and then resend it to us. That would be okay. That, 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 that would be helpful. I don't know if it's a stat if it's a static map because of the fact that the, your website is not running at the moment, or maybe they get um, that. No, stuff. it's it's dynamic. I just I've got a, like a backup website that I started up. Okay, so the URL is kind of has a lot of numbers in it instead of my initials, but okay, it, it's online. Okay. So I, I just have a logistical question about moving forward, uh, like on this particular project. In my mind, um, and I, I don't have to have it like my way or anything, but I'm kind of a like, um, uh, break down the project and get it done person stop <laughs> so um it feels like to me what would be helpful is to have a person who's like the chair of this project doesn't mean they have to do everything and then they would have a team of people that would go out and actually hang the door hangers and then um we'd have to talk about who's going to collect the information and who's going to go back and it, does that same team commit you know this is like a one-time project so does that same team commit to going back to re-talk to those people and then once we get uh like i don't think i can as the planting coordinator like do all that is what I'm trying to say. Like, I feel like I could come in on the end of, okay, you've got these requests and um, and I'm happy to help develop, you know, maybe with Jordan, like a list of trees, small, medium, large that we want to recommend or something like that. I don't, I just, I just uh, drafted you, but <laughs> you, can, you can decline, you know, but the team of people go has a little meeting or a training, goes out, talks to the people who respond, and then um, you know we can train them how to put you know how to put a stake in, and it, it, you know what I mean. And then I could come so in and call, I, like I, I I I want I want not to interrupt you. I just wonder if it would be helpful if over the summer. The folks that are involved with the setback planting, I mean, man, and Christina and whoever else is actually out there, Tom Bassett, right? Other volunteers that are actually would be helpful. Maybe if we sort of all just got together and had a coffee or something and sort of had a conversation about how it's going presently, like what, what works, what doesn't work. Right. Cause Christina has, um, through some emails I've seen, you know, it's been, a little bit of a challenge which is totally understandable and mm -hmm. and then sort of maybe come back maybe we could do this before our next commission meeting just sort of get together and just sort of figure out like capacity wise and what would be the best structure and then report back to the commission 
because I think it would be a mixture of uh, like my, I would be involved at a level um, and other, uh, maybe a few other commissioners might be involved and then mm -hmm. Tree Northampton um, volunteers to make it all work. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be helpful to sort of figure out what, what's, this is a much larger area than just, you know, targeting, talking to an individual person who's emailed us who wants a tree, right? This is a little different. Mm -hmm. this, takes a little, this takes a little bit more of a lift and needs to be clearly organized. And I, I agree. Right. So. Yeah, right now, to be honest with you, Christine is really the person who's handling, I mean, Sue and I meet and we support Christina, like Sue and I meet weekly to kind of like go over the tree tracker and figure out new sites and, you know, make sure everything is accounted for. And, um, but Christina is really the person who's doing all the human contact. And then I'll, you know, help her uh, if she has some questions or Jordan has done some drive-bys to help pick species. And, uh, but she keep, you know, she's really the only person who's talking to uh, setback people. And then we do some of the footwork, you know, I'll go and look at the, the site after it's been dig saved, for example, to make sure we don't have to move the stake. Then I communicate with her to let her know when, she, you know, her, her setbacks are on the list to be planted so she can contact the homeowners. You know, she's really, that's kind of the way it's running now. Right, Sue? That's. Um, yeah, exactly. So we need, um, if we want to scale up, that means a couple more people stepping forward who are willing to go do the back and forth communication with the homeowner. It's quite a few emails back and forth, at least one meeting. And then um, it's wonderful. Jordan's been stepping up to help that technical part with Jen to look at the species. But a couple more Christina's, look at Cloner. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody on this commission is interested in that part, emailing don't, and meeting with residents, but that's what we need. What's the con What's the content of the meeting before? I mean, I might be willing to do that with, oh. I don't really want to be somebody who's like finding the residents who are interested, although I could go and hang door hangers on some of these places um but i think i could probably follow up with someone who's interested um i don't really know what's involved i mean i know some of the steps i know they have to sign sign the agreement i can't help with the actual tree selection i just don't have the the knowledge to do that you would never be you wouldn't be asked to do it cuz um yeah it there's so many different factors in it that someone, Jen, who's worked in the industry, Jordan, who's worked in the industry, it it's something, it, you know, they'll give their first, second, third choice of a tree. But the way it's been working now, the workflow is they come in through a form, online form, and then we notify Christina. When Jen and I meet, we email Christina with a list and say, these people and are in, you know, look in this sheet and you'll find these people and, um, and, and their phone, their email addresses, they have made these requests for a tree on their property. And she gets in touch with them, sets up a meeting, goes and um, talks to them. We can sometimes give, we give her, I don't know if at that point we give, we, we send her out and she looks at it and gets an idea whether maybe it's a small, medium, or large space. And um, that's when somebody else has to go in and say, yeah, it is big enough for a big tree. And, but um, just the, the initial meeting is just to identify the spot that it, they want it. Is that right, Jen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to say, I have enough knowledge that you look, and I could train somebody to decide whether it's small, medium, large, and kind of what I look for, you know, overhead wires, or if there's wires coming like this into the house, it has to have a certain shape or, you know, that kind of, that kind of thing. How driveways. Much, yeah, driveways, sight lines, stuff like that. But, um, 
so then we we help out um you know christina will say i need you know what do we well now we're operating out what do we have in the nursery you know that, that you know but um we can have a list of small medium large trees and um that we would like to plant and they could choose from that or say oh i'd like this one and then my vision it can be different it doesn't have to be my vision would be whoever makes that initial contact even if i help or jordan helps or whoever figure out what the specific tree or or whittle it down to two trees that they can choose um goes back to the homeowner and says okay here's the choices um let's you know let's put a stake in here and um get you on the list but the but the point person is you know because sometimes they want to be home or sometimes you know there's all different things <laughs> so it's a lot it's a lot of back and forth so you know as a person who's trying to coordinate all the other plantings i can't really be that person who's talking to the homeowners all i'm happy to talk to them but you know yeah. with them come out or whatever but um you Making know, the appointments, I, going to the appointment, yeah, then yeah. following back up with them on the types of trees that they can choose from. And of course, the setback agreement, um, making sure they have the link to it and they know how to um, know to do that. And then keeping an eye on that and reminding them if they don't get it done. And then I don't know the little part about how we know when those are done exactly. But usually the homeowner will, I think Christina just asked us, you know, tell me when you've done it. <laughs> so we have a pretty good idea if it's <laughs> done. And then we can get somebody else to dig safe it, you know, to, to paint mm, that's it. And, Tom and Bob yeah, Axby. Yeah. Can go out and, you know, mark it and then send it out. And then somebody has to go back and check to see if we have to move the stake if there's a water line there or something. Sue and Jen, would it like be something oh. I could do? Sorry, Jen. Sorry. I'm just volunteering. Yay. Um, yeah, I can, I can volunteer too. I mean, it sounds like an enormous amount. Good out of David. So, uh, but I'd be more than happy to make the initial contact. That'd be great. I, I think Kent and I and Christina working full time would still only be able to do a quarter of it, but I'd be happy to. I don't know. Oh, the, you could cover a lot of ground with three people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause not everybody, I mean, you're going to hang them on the doors, but not everybody is going to respond. You know, we oh. might get, I don't know, 30% or whatever. I'm not sure. I, I think that would be great. <laughs> Super. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing it's not going to be high, but. Yeah. Right. We're we'll probably getting more. I hope that I'm wrong. <laughs> So do would it be helpful to to meet or in person or over Zoom or how are or would it be helpful to uh like meet uh when you and Sue meet on a Friday together? I, I don't you know, I'm not sure if that would work. I think just mull it over. I'll send an email out. Uh okay. Yeah, uh, Christina should definitely be brought yeah. in here because you know she you know, just to, so she knows what we're trying to do and we're, you Makes know, sense. shifting. Yeah. 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 And I definitely, because I, I, I would not want to all of a sudden say, Oh, by the way, Christina, we're going to do this now. And yeah, uh, you have to yeah. go here with everyone else. Okay. And she's been like, yeah. Oh, wait, wait a minute. What happened? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and she's I been doing that. an incredible job. Christina has been really, she is on top of it. She's timely. Yeah. You know, I mean, she's, She's been and, doing a really good job. And the other the other thing that I might suggest that might be helpful is that if we sort of figure out the process, then should we make a flow chart for yes. this particular for there this particular piece yeah. of the puzzle? Yeah. 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 In case for some reason we all went on the same cruise ship and never <laughs> returned. Right. So. right. Right, right. Yeah. Um, well, I think it's helpful to keep, 
you know, even information, uh, you know, if somebody could keep like a log of what we've done, because, um, you know, this, this could be helpful for us, but also helpful for other people, you know, to um, look, we took this project on, this is why we did it, this is how we did it. And this was the percentage we got returned. And here's the brochure. And, you uh, know, this worked yeah. and this was right. effective. And right, right, right. All Just right. one uh -huh. little thing that's kind of specific is there's a place called the Trumbull Place Office Suites. Yeah. Um, does anybody know? Just in this group, does anybody know? Um, yes. And the owner so the, uh you mean on the corner of uh state and yeah, uh, state, and, state right and trump here. they have a nice big lawn yeah yeah they do and they had a they did have trees that had sugar maples they took them down they were they were in decline ah yeah that's actually an empty a quite an empty spot and then there's other nobody's uh, friends with them or <laughs> no i okay. mean we will we will be friends with them yeah <laughs> and, and on Trumbull Road itself, there are quite a few Norway maples that are probably at the end of their life cycle that will have to be removed. Okay. Sorry for the, like, I went no. on a tangent, but. No, it's fine. It's just it, wanted to see if anybody knew them. <laughs> I'll, I'll send out, a, I'll make a little note for myself. I will send out a uh, an email trying to figure out when would be best for uh, who would want to meet. Uh, yeah, and Rick, Rick, just just a thought is that uh, you talked about Zoom or in person. My my preference would be strongly for in person. Yes, the, I na yeah. the nature of this job and everything. Yeah, else. yeah, I totally, yeah. I totally agree. With this just I we got to be. I just want to make be careful if we, um, if we're having a quorum. Right, we right. Have, we'll probably right. have to post it. That's the only thing. So even if it's field work, or, uh, if, yes, wouldn't be deliberating on a commission well we sort of are deliberating on a process that will come okay. back to the commission that will be codified so i think it's best if we just are above board you know um, okay so I, i'll i'll send an email out and then we'll try to figure out a time that works i'll send you my schedule we'll start with that thank you rich yeah. yes and i'll also i'll just uh loop christina in personally before all that just to let her know we're, we're talking Good. about yeah all right all right well we've used we've used a lot of our time for a lot of good things um any other questions before we move on to the next agenda item which we have not much time to talk about but not a question but a comment if there are ways that sure. i can do more of the species recommendations if that's helpful it takes uh, work off your plate, Jen, or whomever, please, I'm happy to send them along. And I'd like to help in other ways, but right now I just, plate's kind of full, but that's, if that's a way I can fill in, uh, please. It's the most like effective to... thing for you to yeah, do. It's super helpful. Super helpful. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a village to, to raise a tree. <laughs> uh, it's as simple as that. So, uh, okay. Our last agenda item was spring planting update. I don't know if, uh, we're still, I mean, I can do it quickly. I can't give you numbers. I don't have them all totaled up, but uh, Jen or Sue might know more than I because, but we're still planting. Um, we planted today, uh, a couple of hiccups with a setback today, a hiccup with a tree belt planting uh, as well. So we're the, we're, I'm working on the tree belt planting with the resident because I have a relationship with the, the, uh, the resident, a longstanding relationship. But I mean, if the weather, um, if the weather holds out and, you know, stays in the fifties at night and seventies during the day, I'm okay. Continuing planting, you know, if, if we can, if we can support it, I am waiting for, uh, a small handful of trees to come from Amherst nursery to fill some of the, um, particular places that we have. But, you know, other than that, that's really I don't have any more. Jen or Sue, if you want to add, please do. You've been you've been going gangbusters pretty much. You've been very consistent. Jen, did That's we the... review Friday? Did we come up with did we count them or anything? 
We did. I think you wrote it down, but we could also like be prepared to present uh, in uh, July because then we'll actually be done done probably. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Uh, the only other thing that we'll probably, I just want to, I'll circle back with you offline, Rich, about um, we've got a handful of um, tulip trees that we really should plant this spring rather than wait to plant them next spring. So we yeah. can try to find a couple spots in, yeah. um, and that could be a day we could easily plant, you yeah. know, those, but I'll, I'll circle yeah. back to you. I just want to yep. remind you of that. Yep. That's fine. That's fine. So yeah, it's been it's been a great spring. I think I thank the volunteers from Chino Hampton and the other commissioners that have really given 120% as always. Um and you know, um without again, I think today reiterated to me again how important it is to have community engagement in this process. And community engagement without that, this is this process is not possible and this process is not sustainable. But we have actually, I think, continued to rally. And um, this is really what it's all about. Um, it makes me feel really good to see, to to know that other communities are doing the same thing. Um, you know, so what we're doing is is awesome. So I, I thank everyone. Uh, does anyone have any other business not anticipated by the chair? I think we I think we already did all that. Right. <laughs> All right. No one else has any. So our next meeting will be July. Let me just look at my calendar real quick. I'm sorry. Will be July 3rd. Everyone think they're going to be here for that. Oh, I can't Maybe. speak to that. Okay. Well, I'll send out. I will just, if you know your <laughs> schedule, you're not going to be available. Just send me an email and that way I can make sure we have a quorum. Well, the fourth is the holiday then. Yes. Thursday's yep. the holiday. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I might yep. be away. Okay. Well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Right. Uh, and then uh, if anyone's interested, I will send you any, the email well about the meeting, but also the Tree City USA award ceremony. Okay. So, um, but other than that, that's really all I have. If there's no other business... I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. We have a second. I'll second. All right. Uh, any discussion? There's seeing no discussion. Just a raise of the hands to adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much.